Hello, welcome to AP Sources Simplified. Today we are looking at the 1912 political platform of Woodrow Wilson, New Freedom. Before getting into the details of New Freedom, let's take a look at the context. In the early 20th century, the Progressive Era began. Progressives at all levels of government and society set about to reform America. The previous era, the Gilded Age, saw great economic growth, but also produced a number of societal ills, including high income inequality, polluted cities, and a struggle for existence amongst the country's poor, who had almost no social welfare system to help them out. At the national political level, Presidents Teddy Roosevelt and William Taft already pushed through Congress and signed many reforms. However, many progressives in both the Democratic and Republican parties felt much more was needed to be done. The Democratic candidate for the presidency in 1912 was Woodrow Wilson. He was from Virginia and had an academic background, including being a professor and then president of Princeton University. Wilson went on to become governor of New Jersey, which he fought against political machines in his own party and drifted towards the progressive left. Wilson had both the bona fides of being a Southerner, an academic, and a progressive. Former populists and Democratic leaders like William Jennings Bryan felt Wilson had a real chance of being the first Democrat in a long time to become president. So Wilson was nominated by the Democratic Party for the 1912 election. The election 1912 was a fascinating one. While the Democrats nominated Wilson, the Republicans were in turmoil as a rift developed between factions of Taft and Roosevelt. Taft would become the nominee, but a dejected and angered Roosevelt ran as a third party candidate for the Bull Moose Party. There was also another candidate, Eugene V. Debs, who carried a significant amount of support as a socialist candidate. The race came down to Roosevelt and Wilson, who had competing progressive platforms, Roosevelt's New Nationalism and Wilson's New Freedom. The two platforms had similarities, but there were certain philosophical differences and differences in the role of the government and trust between the two. Now let's look at the key details of Wilson's new freedom. As a nod to the populist base of the Democratic Party, Wilson hearkened back to Thomas Jefferson's yeoman farmer ideal. Jeffersonian ideal believes democracy works best at the local level, and the small farmer and small business owner are what should be emphasized and protected by the U.S. government. The government had for too long protected big business and banks over the interests of the individual, and Wilson argued that the government must attack this triple wall of privilege. The first thing Wilson said was to cut tariffs. Tariffs were set up in order to protect big business. However, they hurt farmers. In order to favor farmers, tariffs must be cut. Ending this protection for big business may also have the effect of creating more competition and allow for more small businesses to compete with big businesses. The next privilege are the big banks and gold standard. Deflation or no inflation hurts farmers as their commodities they produce like beef and corn were not increasing in value relative to the currency. Also, Wilson felt banks had too much control over interest rates on loans, and especially the mortgages of farmers. Wilson wanted the government to have stricter regulations over the banks, and more flexibility with the currency, including allowing it to inflate when need be. Finally, were the big whales themselves, the trust and monopolies that dominated entire sectors of the economy. They had been under attack during Roosevelt's and Taft's administrations, but unlike progressive Democrats, Progressive Republicans felt as long as trusts and monopolies acted ethically, they did not need to be broken up, whereas Wilson and Progressive Democrats felt all trusts were bad and must be broken up. In order to do that, new antitrust legislation must be passed. Now quickly taking a look at Wilson's intentions. Wilson's point of view is that of a progressive Democrat who is making his new freedom platform the central part of his campaign for the presidency of 1912. He is intending to reach his voter base, which would be Democrats, progressives, former populists, and farmers. And his purpose is to define the new freedom platform and what progressive reforms would look like from a democratic perspective. Moving on to who would agree and disagree, progressives, especially progressive Democrats, would agree with Wilson's new freedom. It would also garner support from former populists and farmers. Conservative Republicans and Democrats would disagree with the new freedom platform, feeling it was too much government involvement in the economy, and they would prefer a more laissez-faire approach. Also, some progressive Republicans may disagree with the platform, and they side with, with more with Teddy Roosevelt's new nationalism, in which a strong government can effectively oversee and regulate trusts. 
Wilson will go on to win the election in 1912, and many of his progressive ideas will turn into legislative action. First, tariffs are reduced under the Underwood-Simmons Act. Second, the Federal Reserve Act created a new national banking system that would oversee the private banks, regulate interest rates, and be able to influence the money supply and inflation. Thirdly, the Clayton Antitrust Act was passed, which strengthened the Sherman Antitrust Act and exempted unions. It also legalized union activities like boycotts and strikes. There are also a number of other reforms, including banning child labor, rules on working hours, and support for amendments that increase democracy, including the direct election of senators and the women's right to vote, which I will cover in my next video. Okay, that does it for New Freedom. If you like the video, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends.